Hi techies, wish you happy new year to everyone. I am wishing you have good health, happiness and success in this year. And once again wish you happy new year. In this video I am gonna cover few more SQL interview questions and answers. If you see on my screen, these are the questions I am gonna explain in this video. The first one is what is the usage of the NVL function? Second one is what is the difference between the having and where statements? Third one is what is the difference between intersect, union, union all, minus and except? And explain with some example. And what are the constraints commonly used in SQL? What is a composite primary key? What is null value? How it is different from zero or blank space? And what is the difference between the delete and truncate statements? What is the difference between drop and truncate statements? So these are the questions I'm going to explain now. Let's go to the answers. What is the usage of the NVL function? Normally we use NVL function to replace the null values with a default value. This function returns the value of the second parameter if the first parameter which we pass is null. If the first parameter is anything other than null, it will return the first parameter only. This function we use in the Oracle, not in SQL and MySQL. Instead of NVL function, MySQL have if null and SQL server have is null function. The example you can see here, select NVL of 100 comma 200 from dual. This returns 100 because First argument is not null, it is 100. And next one is select NVL of null, comma 200 from dual. This returns 200 because the first argument is null. What is the difference between the having and where statements? Basically, these two statements we use for filtering purpose only, but Having works on aggregated data after they are grouped. So once we completed grouping of data using group by clause, after that it checks the condition which we mentioned in the having and filter out the rows. Okay, but where checks each and every row individually. So before grouping only where condition executes if both statements are present in the query they appear in the following order so when we are writing the query first we write where and then group by and then having so sql engine also interprets them in the same order what is the difference between intersect union union all minus and except if I have two select statements, so if I perform these operations like union, union, all, intersect, and accept, then what are the results it's gonna return means? If I use union, it returns the records obtained by at least one of two queries, excluding duplicates. But if you use union all, it is also same, but including duplicates so it returns all the records and intersect it returns the records obtained by both queries except normally we call it as a minus in mysql and oracle in some databases we call it as except but these two operations are same it returns only the records obtained by first query but not in the second one now i'm gonna explain those operations with some example let's see here i have two result sets set one is the first select query result if i executed individually same thing if i executed second select query i got this second result set so if I use intersect between these two select statements, I got John. This is the common record in set one and set two. 
and if I use union between these two select statements, then I got all the records of set 1 and set 2 as John, Larry, Mary, Sophie, Angela and Linda. But here if you see John is there in the set 1 and set 2, but it's it's given only one time, which means it still is the duplicates. Only one time it will return the value. And the next one is union all. If we want if we want duplicates also, which there in the both result sets, then that time we use the union all. So it is same result set of union, but it will not remove the duplicates. And the second and the next one is minus. If you see set one, we have John, Larry, Mary, Sophie, and set to John, Angela, and Linda. But if we use minus, it just returns the Larry, Mary, Sophie in the first result set, which means it just returns the first result sets of values, which is not there in the second set. So John is there in the second set. So it is not written the John value. It just returns the all the values of set one except John because it's there in the set two. And minus and except are same. Some databases we call it as I mean we use minus and some databases we use except the result set is same. What are the constraints commonly we use in SQL? So as shown on the screen, these are the constraints normally we use in SQL. First one is not null. To ensure the column cannot have a null value, then we use the not null constraint. And the next one is unique. If we want to keep only unique values, not duplicate ones, then we use this constraint. And the next one is primary key. This is a combination of not null and unique. So to identify each row in a table uniquely, we use the primary key constraint. And next one is foreign key. To maintain parent and child relationship between the tables, we use foreign key constraint. And the next one is check. If we want to check any condition based on that, the values which satisfy that condition, then we allow that values into our column. Then we use this check constraint. And next one is default. This one is if suppose there is no value for a specified uh, column value, then that time we use this default value. And the next one is create index. Suppose uh, I want to retrieve data very quickly from the database, that time we use this create index on columns. What is the composite primary key? As I said in earlier slide, primary key contains not null values and unique values. That type of column we are going to declare as primary key to identify each record in a table uniquely. So if a single column is not having those type of values like not null values or unique values in our table. Any single column is not satisfying that condition conditions that time we can declare primary key of a table based on multiple columns. If it's possible means if you combine the columns, I mean, whatever the uh, primary key you declare on multiple columns those columns if you combine it should satisfy the same thing like it should it should not be null and 
it should contains a unique value to identify each and every record in a table so that type of primary key we call it as a composite primary key the next one is what is null value how it is different from zero or blank space most of the people think null zero or blank space these three are same but these three are not same null value indicates absence of data if we have null value for a certain cell or i mean certain cell of a table that indicates there is no data for that cell but if we have zero means it's some valid numeric value only it's not indicates the absence of data and if we have some blank space means it indicates an empty string which is having zero length so this is also a legal string it not indicates the absence of data the next question is what is the difference between the delete and truncate statements basically these two statements we use to delete the rows from a table but there is a small difference what is that means delete is a reversible dml command which means if we use rollback we can recover the deleted data if we use the delete command but truncate is not like that it is an irreversible ddl command once it's deleted the uh, rows we cannot recover those using rollback it's gonna delete all the rows permanently so and also in delete uh, if we specify some where class we can delete one or more rows which satisfies that condition but if we use the truncate means uh, it is it is gonna delete everything i mean all the rows from a table in delete also we can delete all the rows from a table but if we use where class then we can delete one or more if we are not using where class means we can delete all the rows if uh, if we are using delete statement and delete works slower than truncate because delete logs everything each and every transaction in the logs but truncate is not like that it will not log each and every transaction which is deletes and we cannot use truncate statement for a table which contains a foreign key the next question is what is the difference between the drop and truncate statements basically drop deletes a table from a database completely including table structure and all associated constraints and relationships with other tables and access privileges everything it's gonna delete but truncate is not like that it's just gonna delete all rows from a table without affecting the table structure and constraints it just deletes the records prop works slower than truncate as you know prop has so many things to do once it's deleted the data uh, i mean all rows from a table it has to delete the table structure and associate constraints relationships and access privileges everything it has to drop but truncate is just gonna do one thing it just gonna delete all the rows from a table without affecting the table structure so uh, as compared to drop truncate is lesser work so truncate is more faster than drop both are irreversible ddl commands which means we cannot reverse these commands once we executed using rollback also